So I recently started looking into new projectors in hopes of eventually upgrading my current setup. Now after doing a little research, I quickly became overwhelmed with just how many options there are in terms of price, features, specs, and technology. I wanted to first start things out by testing something that's referred to as an ultra short throw laser projector. And I want to thank Paris Roan for sending me out their brand new 4K UHD ultra short throw laser projector with HDR. And in this video, I'll be unboxing, setting up, testing, and going over a few simple things you need to consider when choosing a projector for your space. And one last thing to mention is that Paris Roan has launched a social media campaign that's taking place throughout the World Cup, so make sure to check out the description for more details. So when things arrived, the box was definitely bigger and heavier than I expected. It weighed right around 20 pounds, but the packaging was simple and clean and everything was in perfect condition with no dents or dings. Upon opening things up, you can first remove the black cover that sits on top to reveal the welcome information, user manual, quick start guide, and microfiber cloth. Next, there's a very heavy duty thick layer of insulation that needs to be removed. This is protecting the main components, which are the remote with a removable back that takes two AAA batteries, the power cord, and finally, the actual projector which weighs around 15 pounds and feels very solid in hand, and being that I don't get to keep this and have to send it back, I'm trying to be as careful as possible when moving this thing around. On the back is where you'll find most of your ports. You have your USB, two HDMI slots, audio out, AV in, LAN, and your power. And on the right side you have a USB 1 slot. Next to that you'll find an adjustment wheel and these will be on both sides that allow you to make very subtle adjustments to the picture by raising or lowering the front legs underneath. And finally the device itself also has an on off button if you don't want to use the remote. Now maybe you have heard of Paris Roan before, but I personally had not, so I wanted to do a quick dive into their history. Turns out they've been around for a very long time. The company was founded in Paris back in 1915 with the slogan of bettering your life. They started out with humble beginnings by first producing vacuum cleaners and have since then expanded into many different home appliances. I also pulled up their Amazon storefront and was happy to see that their products averaged around a 4.5 out of 5 stars based on reviews, which does give me a little extra confidence that this projector should be no different. Now since I basically wanted to test out different products before pulling the trigger, I don't want to take down my current setup yet, so I'll be clearing out my back wall to test things out, and I'm super excited that I'm not going to have to deal with trying to mount this to the ceiling. Ultra short throw projectors are meant to be placed usually 5 to 18 inches from the wall depending on what screen size you want and can be placed on a console table if you want the image to be closer to the ceiling. Now if you're going to be projecting this directly onto the wall and you don't want to spend any additional money on a screen, you might want to paint the part where the image will be something that's closer to gray than to white. As for everything else, a darker color is recommended to reduce light from bouncing around and washing out the image. And for my initial testing, I'm going to keep everything white, see how things look, and go from there. And since I don't want the projector just to be sitting on the floor, I built this small media stand with hidden LEDs, and if you're interested, make sure to check out the full how-to video I made for this project. Next, it's time to get things fired up, and this brings me to another point. From the time you start taking this out of the box until the time you can be enjoying a 150 inch screen could literally be as short as a couple minutes. There's no mounting on the ceiling, no having to hide cables in the wall, you don't have to buy 15 foot long wires to get to your power or receivers, you simply set it down, plug it in, and turn it on. Before turning off the lights, I want you to quickly look at the wall. To the naked eye, it appears to be in excellent condition, free of blemishes, smooth even paint job, and very flat. What I'm about to find out is just how imperfect this wall actually is. Initial setup is a breeze. You select a language, connect the remote via Bluetooth, set up your Wi-Fi, you have some screen calibration options that I'm going to skip for now, select your time zone, and then you're done. Now one thing you'll certainly have to do is begin to make adjustments in order to get the image to look like it should from a size and shape perspective. I'm first going to go into the settings and select keystone correction. And going back to my wall, hopefully you can see that it's far from perfect. There's little divots everywhere where the drywall was attached to the studs and you can see how crooked and warped looking the lines are which is the result of my wall apparently nowhere near to being perfectly flat. And even with this far from perfect wall, by moving the projector around, making some keystone corrections on this menu, and using the knobs on the left and right of the device, you can quickly get things to look much closer to the size and shape that it should be. Right now the projector is about 10 inches away from my wall and it's creating an image that's 100 inches in size. And since I still have room to expand, I'm going to move things back a little bit more. It's now about 14 and a half inches from the wall, which has increased things to around 120. I'm going to keep things here, but it's crazy to think that I can move the projector back another 4 inches to get a massive 150 inch display on the wall. And after making a few more minor keystone corrections to try to compensate for how warped my wall is, I'm at a point where it's about as good as it's going to get without getting an actual screen. Going back into the settings, I'm going to go into electronic focus to make sure the laser is calibrated for a sharp image. At this point, I'll quickly run through all the settings in case you're interested to see what this has to offer. 
There's a lot of different calibrations and adjustments that you can make and after playing around with things for hours and seeing what everything does, I found that the settings that it comes with out of the box are what I recommend sticking with in terms of picture color, brightness, etc. The only thing I found myself doing is turning the brightness down at night when the room is completely dark which provided for deeper blacks and better contrast. Another thing to point out as I'm going through the settings is how responsive the remote is and how fast Android 9.0 is running on the system. Nothing ruins an OS experience like leggy performance and I'm very glad that this does not suffer from that. But with that being said, with all the different ways of getting content to the projector such as your gaming console, Nvidia Shield, Apple TV, Fire Stick, Roku and others, I would recommend using those over this software for your apps and programs. Now if you do plan on using this as your main OS, you can go into the application market and download the apps you want. Scrolling through, it seemed to have most of the ones you would expect. Once downloaded, they'll appear in your local applications. And under multi-screen support, at the time of this video, the app functionality to connect your phone to the projector to cast and mirror is expected to be up and running late October or early November, so that is still to come. So let's finally get into testing this out. I'll be using my Nvidia Shield Pro which I've had for over a year now and absolutely love. Right now I'll just play different YouTube 4K content and provide commentary on different things that I'm seeing as well as thoughts that are running through my head. The first thing I immediately notice is that the immersion I'm feeling when watching things is on a completely different level with the 120 inch image compared to the 100 inches that my current setup has. I didn't think the extra 20 inches would be such a dramatic upgrade but it really is a night and day difference. Now I went into this with zero expectation since this is my first ever 4K projector I've tried but I was not expecting the detail to be so incredibly sharp and I certainly did not expect it to look this good on the wall. I'll take the camera closer up so you can get a better feel for just how crazy the level of detail is. So a couple things this projector has from a spec standpoint that help achieve these type of results are a contrast ratio of 3001, which means it's able to display deeper shadows and brighter highlights, which complements the HDR 10's ability. Next is the 100% Rec 709 color gamut. This allows a wider range of colors to be used to create images with vivid detail. And finally, the 2000 ANSI lumens of brightness will theoretically allow you to watch and enjoy content in rooms where you can't block out the daylight, but I'll get into this a little bit later on in the video. Here I'm going to quickly walk into the picture so you can get a better feel for the scale of the room and just how big the picture really is. And for reference, I'm 6 feet 4 inches tall with a 6 foot 8 inch wingspan. Now during this trailer I want to point out that even with my room being painted all white and during some of these bright scenes you can very much see the light bouncing off the walls, the picture quality still remains what I would consider to be exceptional. Now what I think might best show off the performance of this projector is watching cities come alive at night. I think at one point I sat here for two straight hours just mesmerized. And even though projectors I don't think will ever be able to replace TVs when it comes to brightness, black levels on OLED panels, or image quality, after watching these clips I must admit it's a lot closer than I ever imagined it would be. Next I want to move on to gaming, and this projector should satisfy the casual console player with 60Hz refresh rate and 50 milliseconds of input lag. And just like before, playing on this setup is just on a completely different level in terms of feeling like you're actually in the game. Here I'm playing perhaps the best game ever made, Mario Kart on the Wii, and please note that I'm on the third lap and in 11th place because you're about to witness an epic comeback.
Now I'll just go through some gameplay footage videos from YouTube so you can get a better feel for how things look on next-gen devices. is reproduced down to the in using the power of the Xbox Series X and S consoles ray tracing makes everything feel more connected cars reflecting onto other cars cars reflect in their own As far as sound quality, this comes with dual 25 watt drivers that support Dolby Audio and DTS decoding. And if it were not for the amazing image quality, this might have been what I was most impressed with. The sound was loud, clear, and it filled the room entirely at only 60%. And since one of my favorite things to do is just put on some music and relax, I was super happy that it performed so well. If you're wanting to have all your friends over for the big game, this projector with its built-in motion smoothing technology will ensure the fast-paced action remains crisp and clear with no blurring. Now if you love watching food videos like I do, please do so at your own risk. My guess is if I had this projector for a couple months, I'd more than likely gain at least 20 pounds. In fact, after watching this video, I took the family to Texas Roadhouse for dinner. Oh yeah, that's the searing sound we're looking for. This is about an inch and a half thick steak. I also like to give it a couple of light presses with my tongs just to make sure. Oh yeah, nice crust. Because we coated it, that's what it's all about. So from what I've seen up until now, in a very dark room, this thing shines and performs great. Now let's see what happens when you begin to introduce light. Right now it's about as dark as it can possibly get inside this room considering it's daytime outside. I'll first open up the window on the right side. This won't let a ton of light in being that there's an overhang outside, but you can still see a little difference. Next I'll turn the hallway light on and again not much changes. Now I'll be turning the lights on at the back of the room and they're going to be at 100%. Here you can for sure start to see a noticeable difference. And at this point the picture isn't washed out too much and I would still enjoy casually watching content. 
Next, I'll be turning the front can lights on at about 25% brightness. Bumping it up to 50%, and now 100. So at this point, with every possible light turned on at 100% and the windows open, the image is extremely washed out where I would not even bother watching anything on it because it just looks bad. Now this isn't a knock on the product, but more just a limitation of the laser technology that projectors have. If this is the type of environment that you're wanting to use a projector in, I would probably not waste your money. Now I am going to be installing and testing an ambient light rejecting screen in an upcoming video, so I'm excited to see that even in the harshest conditions like this, if that will make a noticeable difference. Now I'll just quickly turn the lights off one by one and close the window so you can watch the crisp and detailed image return. To wrap things up, for my first ever 4K projector experience, I was like a kid in a candy store. I wanted to rewatch all my favorite movies and YouTube videos. It almost felt like when I was little and opening up presents on Christmas morning and there was that one toy that you just couldn't put down. And in the two weeks I've had this so far, my family and I have watched more movies together down here than in the previous six months combined. Now I still want to test out other short throw laser projectors as well as traditional ceiling mounted ones, but after testing this out, I've at least made up my mind that it's going to be 100% worth the upgrade. Thank you all so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions at all.